Welcome back to the channel guys, my name is Amit and in today's video I want to talk about a topic that a lot of people are worried about generally after hair transplant, which is shock loss. Now if you're new to the channel, welcome. I post regularly about me getting not just one, but two hair transplants in the last two years. The first being for my hairline and my mid scalp, and the second, most recently, being for my crown. I post about my experience and any valuable tips that is for anyone who has gotten a hair transplant or someone who's looking to get one. If content like this interests you, do definitely consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel, especially if you want to see me grow a full head of hair, because that's what people on the internet are into nowadays, right? All right, so let's talk about shock loss. Firstly, shock loss is a very common phenomenon that happens right after a hair transplant procedure. It refers to the temporary shedding of the pre-existing non-transplanted hairs within the recipient area. Although it can be distressing, shock loss is a temporary condition and the transplanted hair continues to grow back normally afterwards. Now before understanding shock loss fully, we need to understand what our hair follicles go through, the entire life cycle that it actually goes through in order to get to that situation. There are three main stages for a hair follicles hair growth cycle. This includes the antigen phase, which is also known as the growth phase. During this stage, the hair bulb divides rapidly and new cells are formed, which eventually become the hair shaft. The hair continues to grow longer during this phase, which can last for several years, but is also dependent on the individual itself. The duration of the antigen phase is one of the factors that influence hair length potential. Now the second phase is called the catagen phase, which is also the transition phase. This stage comes right after the first, so the growth stage, but the difference here is that the hair follicles start shrinking over time and hair growth stops, which is not really ideal for any of us, but this phase usually lasts for a few weeks. Finally, the last stage is the telogen phase, which is also known as the resting phase. In this stage, the hair follicle remains dormant and the old hair shaft is gradually being pushed out by the new hairs from the antigen phase. This is when your hair starts to fall out naturally is because new hair is being grown and pushing out the old hair. And this usually lasts for a couple of months. Now, there are a couple of reasons why you actually have shock loss, and I'm going to try to narrow those down for you. The first one is surgical trauma. The process of a hair transplantation involves making tiny incisions and implanting new hair follicles into the area. This surgical trauma can disrupt the existing hair follicles, which in turn can lead to more temporary shedding. Another reason why shock loss might happen is because of the disruption of blood supply. This usually happens during the transplantation procedure, but there might be a temporary disruption to your blood supply around your existing hair follicles. This can definitely cause your hair to shed even more faster. Another reason why shock loss might happen is because you have a pre-existing hair condition. Patients with weak or miniaturized hairs in the recipient area might be more susceptible to having a higher rate of shedding and shock loss because the hair is already in a delicate state. So after hair transplant, the recipient area isn't the only area where you can actually have shock loss. Because in reality, it can also happen on the donor area, but it's much more rare. But regardless, there are reasons why it could happen. First is also surgical trauma. Just as we do with the recipient area, there are tiny insertions placed onto the donor area which could in fact affect the existing hair follicles that are around that area that's being extracted. There are different techniques that are used like the FUE, which is follicular unit extraction, or even strip harvesting. Again, as I said, it's, it's quite rare to have, but it definitely has happened before. In certain studies and patients, there could be shock loss in that area as well. Another thing could be through genetic factors. If you generally have thinning hair all over your donor area, you might be more susceptible to more shock loss on that area. So it's really important to consult your doctor about whether your donor area Area is strong enough to be able to have a hair transplant procedure in the first place but if not it's definitely a possibility that you can have shock loss on that area because of a genetic factor and the last reason why you definitely could have shock loss on your donor area is improper post-op care there are a lot of things that can affect it such as excessive rubbing or scratching on the donor area which could then accelerate it and you end up losing more hair now we've talked about what shock loss is and the reasons behind it but let's talk about how we can deal with it as someone who's experiencing it so the first thing I would advise is to be patient. It is important to remember that shock loss is only a temporary phase in your hair transplant journey. The shedding is part of a natural hair cycle that will eventually allow yourself to have the new hairs grow out. So really having the shedding phase happen actually tells you that your hairs that will grow back. So it's a good sign. It, it should be a good sign. Another way to deal with it is that you can always consult your doctor that performed the surgery on you. If you're ever concerned about it, they're the best people to go back to and ask for their opinions. They would probably give you the right type of advice on how you can further prevent more shock loss from happening. We can also deal with it by following the post-op care that's recommended by our clinics. 
The clinic will generally provide you with post-op instructions, which may include things such as gentle hair care practices and avoiding activities that can provide more stress on the scalp, such as getting back to the gym or working out at an early stage before you're meant to. Adhering to these instructions will definitely help minimize your hair loss. Another way to deal with shock loss is by considering using some medical treatments. Now, in some cases, your doctor will most likely prescribe you with certain medications that you should be taking right after a hair transplant, but they also highly recommend taking minoxidil and finasteride. Now, these two products are very highly recommended to use after a hair transplant. It's not necessary, but again, it's highly recommended. Minoxidil helps to promote hair growth, while finasteride helps to prevent further hair loss. Although these medications will be beneficial to use to help fight shock loss, it is also important to discuss potential side effects that could occur after using these products. Lastly, I think the best way to also prevent shock loss is by maintaining a healthy lifestyle. These include a balanced diet, some very light regular exercise, and even adequate sleep. All these things can help promote hair growth as well as overall scalp health in both the recipient and donor areas. My experience having shock loss on both my experiences of my hair transplant, I was definitely freaking out. When I saw my shock loss happen, I definitely thought that my hair transplant was a failure. At month two, it really affected me because that was like the peak of how much of hair shedding I had and the shock loss amount was quite insane. I was definitely worried that I was going to remain looking like this for a long, long time. But despite that, I ended up following my regimen and my aftercare. I kept using the serums that was recommended by the clinic. I used my own types of minoxidils. I've used, I used to take finasteride as well as certain shampoos that all help together in helping fight shock loss as well as helping promote hair growth after a hair transplant. I have some of those items linked below. Definitely do check them out if you are interested as well. But these are the things that I used to help reduce the amount of shock loss I had at the time. And over time, slowly but surely, my hair started to grow month after month after month and it just, having shock loss felt like an afterthought. Just remember that shock loss is a temporary phase. It is all part of the process of getting a hair transplant. Don't fear, don't be too afraid about having it and losing hope because that is the last thing you want to feel during this entire procedure. Getting a hair transplant already is a big and scary thing to be honest, but mentally preparing yourself to know that shock loss is a normal phase of the whole transplant process, it'll help you greatly. Honestly, you just have to trust the process and know that it's all gonna turn out well in your favor. And trust me, you're gonna look back on those old photos and start laughing at yourself at you feeling this scared or sad during this phase, because honestly, you're gonna look like one handsome guy in a couple of months. Don't quote me on that, but most likely you will. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and it's provided you a little bit of insight about what shock loss is and how you can deal with it. If you like videos like this, definitely do consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I've got some new and exciting videos coming up very, very soon and definitely hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the videos that are coming out. That's all for me for today. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.